what a wonderful image before us you can see the glowing lights from the sky image taken by nasa but what does it all reflect to us its growing aspirations in the cities this is urbanization globally which you can see in this image the world is getting urbanized 50% of the world today is urbanized by 2050 66% of the world will be urbanized india is today on the growing curve of urbanization if you look at the percentage it's only 34% today but we will cross 50% by 2050 cities you name it urbanization you call it everyone has a different definition for looking at it it has no boundaries but if you go by population and if you find out that the cities which are having 10 million plus population across the world there are 38 such cities six of them are in india urbanization has crossed all boundaries people want to move to cities for fulfilling their desires aspirations and better quality of life it's a phenomena that's happening world over and we have to accept it that urbanization is the future <coughs> but why do people travel to cities this is city of dreams city of opportunities city that never sleeps city that always is running amchi mumbai why do people come to mumbai it's magnet pan india people travel to mumbai for making the living or do they come to live they want to take a job they want to make a career they want to make it big the bollywood of mumbai attracts everyone from india to make it big on the silver screen we want it to be there the world should know if you do something in mumbai and a success story everybody wants to follow that that's mumbai that's mumbai's magnet you have a stock exchange we have a tradition of the best financial center we have festivals we have great universities we have the iit which is here people come to fulfill their dreams in sports they want to excel in every field of their walk of life you have quality of space here you want to improve that is why people move to cities but let me take you to the other side of the city and zoom in and see how the city looks from inside is it all the dreams what we see from outside and get attracted to our cities this is what actually is happening to our cities let me tell you an incident what happened in my life imagine my that no one i hope and pray no one of us or our near and dear ones is in that ambulance a friend of me who is a doctor called me and said can you save lives i said you are a doctor why do you ask me he said you are an urban planner and i am a doctor but the ambulance are unable to reach me in time i am getting dead bodies from the ambulance because they just reach don't reach in time to hospitals it sinked upon me i started wondering can urban planners save lives the answer was an affirmative yes this situation should not happen i wanted to deep dive into urban planning and see what is gone wrong with the cities and when i deep dived i found the scale of the issues is too large we have an issue of inhuman way of traveling this is about 1 square meter i am standing and just imagine instead of me there are 16 more people standing here if 16 more people stand here there have to be five or six people who are going to just catch this and 
hang out. And that's the first image which you see of about 70 lakh people traveling every day in these conditions. A train which has a capacity of carrying about 2,000 people, carrying 5,000 people every day. People have to travel because there is no other way of commuting in Mumbai than suburban train and roads. And suburban trains are <coughs> in this condition. Roads are black, choker walk. You have to cross by taking risk of your life. Mumbai is not proof from the extreme events. We have got floods, we have got heat island effect, we have got coastal storms, and we have a problem of housing. Let me take you to the journey of last 60 years of Mumbai's urbanization. What did the planners do and did they do and what happened had a synergy in them. Mumbai was initially confined in the 1960s to the Greater Mumbai limits. And the red images, what you saw in the first image, shows that the red portion is only very restricted. That's Mumbai, which you know. And if you see me, the jobs are located somewhere in the south. And people travel from the north where they stay straight to the south. The city has a sea on one side and creek on the other side. It can't expand this way. It's a linear city. That is what the first images showed. And the approach in the master planning in the first city was we'll confine the population. We will restrict the growth in the South Bombay so that people will go towards northward and the development will start taking place in the north area. <coughs> but then we found that this is not the correct approach. People are not moving there. People are going farther and farther away. They are traveling almost two hours every day in the morning and in the evening to get to their offices. Something has to be changed. We prepared a master plan and we thought that we should not only confine our imaginations to Mumbai, which was initially a port trading and port uh, labor and the textile uh, mills coming up and the labor there around. And the situation was that about 70% of the jobs were only in Mumbai and people used to travel from distances of about 100 kilometers, 60, 75 kilometers to Mumbai. But then the government thought that we should have a regional plan because people from far away places were coming and the spillover of Mumbai was going in the region. That is why MMRD was formed. The first regional plan had to be prepared. We also wanted to give some interventions in improving the situations. That is why in the next 20 years, we did a comprehensive transport plan. We did a regional plan where the land use was prepared. Land use in simple terms is defining what should come on a particular piece of land, whether it should be residential, whether it should be commercial, and whether it should be a hospital, that is land use. So we assume a population growth forecast and then provide the services. That was done. We wanted New Bombay to develop. We wanted Bandra Kurla Complex as financial center to develop. Those st slowly started decongesting Mumbai a little bit, but the transport was a major problem. People just didn't move because we provided them that you can go there and the land use permitted them. What people in fact wanted was the transport. So the growth did not take place in the anticipated speed and therefore Mumbai still was having a compromised quality of life and the comfort of travel was never there. Then we thought that we should reboot this, we should think again and when the comprehensive transport plan was prepared, then we thought that the solution to commuting is nothing but <coughs> something taking in future because urbanization is here to stay and if you want to plan for a sustainable urban development in future it should be based upon urban mobility we then prepared a master plan of about 100 kilometers initial in 2004 and built the first metro line which was east west as you know, the travel was initially only north-south. We started having east-west connectivities of roads and the trains. We also tried to improve the suburban networks by augmenting their capacities, by implementing programs of Mumbai Urban Trans Project, Mumbai Urban Infrastructure Projects on roads. But widening of roads did an adverse effect. People started coming by cars as the suburban trains were still in a bad shape to carry with the safety of the commuters. Almost 11 people fall down 
from uh, these trains and lose their lives. Roads were even not good. We are known for the bad roads, bad air quality, bad congestion. This had made a dual problem of suburban trains not being a choice, roads not being a choice, some intervention on a mass scale was required. And I want to tell that mobility for all was the vision of MMRDA when the first master plan was prepared, 100 kilometers was rolled out, and now in the future, at 200 kilometers already execution. When Mumbai is known for all the world records of the highest density city, second, second largest density, with 28,000 people per square kilometer covering this area, working in Mumbai is always challenging. It's like doing a heart surgery on an alive patient. You have to implement metro when the city is running. You just can't have and separate greenfield operations. It is the same road space which you use where people are using for commuting to construct metro. We are now having 337 kilometers of metro master plan, which will have about 14 lines. 10 are already functional. And we are having about 1 crore people who will take this 1 lakh crores of project already executed and this is how it is going to transform the Mumbai metropolitan region's landscape. With mobility reaching on every corner where suburban trends did not reach earlier, we surely feel that the Mumbai metropolitan region is going to get transformed. But is mobility only going to solve the problems of Mumbai? No. We need transit-oriented development. What does this mean? This video will show you what transit-oriented development means about. It's creating spaces around the transit, uh, which we say. People come out from the transit. They have multimodal integration. They can cycle. They can walk. This is an example exactly taken on the Western Express Highway, where two stations and about 500 meters around the stations, the area is developed. If you see the green spaces are created, public realm is created, there is a multimodal integration, people can walk, cycle, there are open spaces which are created. This will be the future of transit oriented development around 400 stations in and around Mumbai. Some will be green field where there is no development, some will be brown field like this example shows where the future is going to unfold. And the development is going to be sustainable because this will be compact cities. You can just walk from your place to the office and come back. Or you can take a cycle, go in a metro and uh, go to your places. The metros itself provide for a delightful uh, travel experience. You are having a mobile card, you can use a mobile phone and there is a QR code. You have a seamless travel from um, home, you have a journey app. That journey app is going to help you to plan your entire day. So with this mobility experience to the citizens, we are already future ready. This is Bandra Kurla complex. The cycle tracks are ready. Once the metro is there, the first mile and the last mile are already connected. This is the way forward where the cycle tracks are already in place. The mobility and land use both are hand in hand. There cannot be mobility without a land use. There cannot be a land use without a mobility. When the city planning and the transport are together done, what we'll have is a better impact. IPCC reports have told us recently that the time to act is now. We are already facing extreme events in Mumbai. This is the first generation which is facing the extreme climate change effects, where we can see the newspaper which is talking about rainfalls, we're talking about the highest degree of summer, the extended winters, and the coastal storms. Climate change is a reality. It has come to all of us. We need to reduce carbon emissions 1.5 degrees. And this is the way forward. You have clean transport, green transport, sustainable transport. Less of commuting, less of travel, less of carbon emissions. The time to act is now. And this will be the last generation. If we don't do anything, we'll not be able to meet the targets. Only because of doing the urban mobility, 1 million metric tons per year will be the carbon emission reduction which will be happening. We have a resource plan in place. About 5 lakh crores, 65 billion US dollars in next 20 years will be used to transform the Mumbai metropolitan region into a sustainable city. How do we do that? You just imagine the two hours which you were spending in the travel, commuting, and risking your lives, now you have to spend with your family. 
see the change in quality of life you will have only because in the mornings and in the evenings you will have that precious time to spend with your near and dear ones imagine taking a bicycle going in a metro and going to the places to see the flamingos or to a golf course in the mumbai metropolitan region this is happening already the lines which are inaugurated view give access to you the metro is very accessible it's inclusive it's clean and green you will have a delightful travel experience in metro with all of this with the transit oriented development which is happening in 400 stations and with the delightful travel experience which all of you will have we are sure the mumbai metropolitan region is going to transform the way we look forward in the city is going to unfold in a way which we have never dreamt of what we call if the mobile phone gets hang you just switch it off and reboot it what mumbai needed was rebooting what urban mobility is going to bring what 300 kilometers of metro is going to transform is this rebooting exercise of mumbai metropolitan region of this size of this scale of this complexity never in the world 200 kilometers of metro is happening in any city across the world when we have this track record of completing the projects in time 24 million people are going to be happy are going to have smiles and we will surely say that if this is a successful model of urban development in future this could be replicated this could be a template for future when india urbanizes all of this urbanization and the smiles will increase your gdp tremendously from cities because cities are known for engines of growth and what is the fuel of this engine it is the urban mobility if you can move freely and if you can save your time and you can use it more creatively more productively it is going to contribution to the wealth building and you are having less to travel and more with your family so even less is more for you it's going to make cities healthy is making going to make people wealthy and it's going to be prosperous this is amchi mumbai